the team finally assembles in this episode of Agatha All Along, and there's a lot to unpack. From unexpected alliances to a catchy musical number, we barely scratch the surface of each Coven member's story, so let's dive in. First Coven member. We start right where the last episode left off, with Agatha running around the house, constantly losing it over the illusion she's been living in. Meanwhile, Teen is still tied up, desperately trying to get her attention. As Agatha's about to leave, House is yours, random boy. Be sure to tell the vengeance seekers I said hi. Teen finally breaks through to her, saying, Take me to the witch's road. This stops Agatha in her tracks. Despite the fact the witch's road is considered a death wish, both seem to be desperate enough to be tempted by the power it offers. I love the banter between Agatha and Teen. Agatha is snarky and probing, while Teen is fast talking and clever, managing to intrigue Agatha with his fanboy charms. But there are some strange things happening. For starters, why would Teen want to go on the witch's road if you've got the goods to break a spell cast by the Scarlet Witch? <gasps> why do you need the road? And what's up with the writing on his mouth when he tries to say his name? It's enough to make Agatha change her mind about the witch's road. What's also strange is Agatha trying to drive her car, which makes you wonder, is she fully out of the illusion? Also, Teen is still tied up and has to hop around for the entire scene. Second Coven member. Now that Agatha's on board, we need to assemble the coven to open the road. We learn a lot about covens very quickly. Firstly, it's just that they're drawn together by mysterious forces of fate. Second, within a three mile radius, you will find enough witchy type people to form a coven. Wherever you are, a coven there shall be. And third, even the most down and out witches, when in close proximity with each other, bring out a magical spark. All of this is to say that they don't have to go very far to find the people they need, which is good because it needs to be done before sundown. Their first stop is Lilia Calderone, a psychic divination witch. Lilia is not easily fooled by Agatha. She reads her like a book, bringing Agatha almost to tears. But Agatha brushes it off and is thrilled to find such a powerful witch. We learn about Lilia's quirks when she screams out of nowhere and says that no right-minded witch would coven up with Agatha Harkness. Not looking for right-minded witches as it happens. Lilia takes an interest in Teen, but Agatha deflects, saying that this is my pet. This is my pet. Say hi, pet. Hi. Hi. Agatha takes the distraction a step further and tells Lilia that the only way Agatha can take a witch's power is if she's blasted with them. Something that could be very important later. When Lilia tries to kick them out, she has a sudden premonition, jotting down the names Agatha needs for her coven. Lilia's names included. Teen is thrilled by how it turned out. That was amazing. And we got a team roster out of the deal too. But Agatha gets distracted by a crow. Third Coven member. Next up is Jennifer Jen Kale, who isn't exactly happy to see Agatha. There are no pleasantries here. Agatha cuts straight to the point. Jen warns, It's a dead end. Literally. But Agatha insists that the road can break Jen's binding spell and restore her to power. When this doesn't work, Teen steps in, using the same sweet-talking approach he used with Agatha. Jen is intrigued, especially after Teen highlights her legal troubles. Agatha looks proud of how Teen handles the situation. As they leave, Teen optimistically declares they're halfway there. Two down, two to go. Uh, just one, actually. What? Yeah. Well, Leah said four names. Yep. Let me see, let me see. What are you... <sighs> Very mature. Come on, Teen. Fourth Coven member. Alice Wu Gulliver, a blood witch with a mysterious backstory, is next on the list. A blood witch is... Child of a witch. In this case, her mom was a witch. And also, a famous goddess of rock. They use Teen trying to shoplift to get her attention. And when Agatha introduces himself, she refers to Teen as... This is my familiar Toto. Alice gets fired because of the incident, but neither Teen nor Agatha can convince her to join the coven. With only two witches gathered, they head back to Westview. During the drive, Agatha tries to learn more about Teen, but his answers are muffled. Me? Originally? I mean, 
I was born and grew. Definitely strange. Fifth Coven member. Agatha arrives back in Westview, looking fabulous, but gets startled by a wolf on the road. As she rips down the coven sign Teen lovingly made, the witches arrive, including Alice. But there's one problem. They need a green witch to complete the coven. Teen gets serious for the first time with Agatha and asks Lilia for the missing name, which turns out to be a black heart, hinting at Rio, who confirmed her black heart in the last episode. You don't have a heart. Yes, I do. It's black. But Agatha decides to recruit Miss Sharon. <laughs> I know you get confused sometimes, but my real name is Sharon. Instead, luring her with the promise of a party. The Witches Road and Uninvited Guests. Now that the coven is assembled, they begin summoning the Witches Road with a musical number. If you haven't heard it in full yet, go and listen. It's amazing and will definitely get stuck in your head. Sadly, I can't play it here for copyright reasons, but trust me, it's worth it. But things go wrong. The song doesn't open the road and the coven turns on each other. Agatha, desperate for someone to blast her and give her power back, fails to convince them. I don't have time for this! Just blast me! Just when all seems lost, Sharon points at a door in the floor. Why it appeared then and not before is a mystery. But my guess is that Teen had something to do with it. We'll dive into this theory in a further episode, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. While the coven sings, Teen is facing his own problems with the Salem Seven as they try to get into the house. Despite his efforts, they break in and he's forced to run down the witch's road with the coven quickly following him. because we should really, really go like right now. No, thank you. Agatha manages to close the door, sealing them in. Safe for now. Once on the witch's road, the coven remove their shoes, apparently a ritual for walking on the hollowed ground. Teen is overjoyed that they make it, and Agatha gives us the parting line. I never doubted us for a second. She always has to get the last word in. There is so much set up in this episode that I'm sure I've missed something. Who is this? Another child sacrifice? But we'll cover it when it's relevant again later in the series. But we did finally make it to the road, and that's exciting. The Coven is an eclectic, unhinged bunch, and it's going to be fun to see how they can work together to face the road's trials. This series has been a blast to cover. And if you want early access to my videos or more exclusive content, consider joining my YouTube membership. As always, thanks for watching, and let's see what other secrets we can uncover next time on Nerdy Investigations.